So here we've assembled the front part of the y-axis. You'll notice we use two X ends and one belt holder. Fitted inside the belt holder is a 608 ZZ roller bearing held in by a 25 millimeter M3 bolt. Uh, as you can see on every point of contact between the plastic and the rods, there is an M8 nut and M8 washer. The distance between these two will be very important, uh, but we'll get to that in a little bit. You'll also notice that for this piece, we've used two, two, two 10 millimeter threaded rods. However, for the back end, we are going to use a 320 millimeter threaded rod for the top part, so that when it, the frame is assembled, it will slide in and give it another point of contact for the frame, reinforcing the structure. Now, the back end of the y-axis is going to pretty much identically match the front end. However, instead of using the belt holder, we're going to use the Y drivetrain, and both M8 threaded rods will go through there. After doing so, you'll see the holes on top of here. The 350mm smooth rods will fit in to each side, slid on with the roller or the linear bearings, after which we will secure the bed frame to the rods using zip ties. So we're going to go ahead and assemble the back end of the y-axis and continue. So we're back after assembling the back end of the y-axis and measuring the distance between the two plastic ends. Uh, as we said earlier, this is very important because the distance between the corners on both ends have to be exactly parallel, otherwise the bed will not slide properly on the y-axis. So next, we're going to assemble the th threaded rods that go from end to end. Um, we have two nut washer combination on the side just to secure them to the plastic ends, and then two in the middle to pinch them to the frame to add another point of contact and stability. So we're going to slide these in on either side just to... And we can worry about the distance later. Right now, the main governing distance is going to be the uh, smooth rods that attach them. So here we have our smooth rods that the linear bearings are going to glide on. Uh, we're going to put one on one side and then push it in here. And then two on the other side and push it in here. You can hear that snap, it's really tight in there. So as I said, we can worry about the distance of the bottom rods later um, when we're ready to put it on the frame. And then the bed here is going to sit on top of these rods and be secured in place using zip ties that go through these holes on either side of the bearing slots. So next we're going to add this into the frame and we'll be ready to continue. All right, so we're going to take a second here to attach the belt to the Y drivetrain to give some movement to the uh, Y axis. So what we're going to need is our assembled Y axis, a NEMA 17 stepper motor with a GT2 timing belt pulley, a Y belt holder, and a GT2 timing belt cut to about 700 millimeters. Uh, distance can be adjusted. Uh, what we need to keep in mind before we start this is that these two pieces need to be exactly lined up and the spaces between them need to be exactly the same. So, let's get started. Let's mount the motor first, just to get it on there tight. Um, normally we use just, we normally use two or three screws to mount the motors, but this one only uses two and they're the same M3 10 millimeters we use for the other ones. Let's get those tightened. Alright, our motor is on there snugly. Now it's already got the pulley attached to it uh, using the grub screws that we are supplied. You're going to want the teeth of the, pu of the pulley facing the motor. 
All right, next we are going to put our Y belt holder here, and you'll see on the top of this, the way this is attached is how we're going to keep the belt tight. So you have this part here, which attaches to the bed frame. The belt, you'll slide into this under portion with the teeth, and then pull it out through the top, bring it around and tighten it to itself so it keeps it tight. So, right now, we're going to go ahead and put our two M3 15 millimeters through there and mount it to our bed frame. This is going to hold it still while we mess with the belt. So you're going to put your washer, your nut, tighten them on there. They don't have to be perfectly tight right now, just tight enough so it doesn't fall. And then other side, same thing. If it helps, you can flip over your axis, it's not going to hurt anything. Alright. This one's giving a bit of trouble. Not a lot of room to screw it on. Alright, so, it's on. Now, we actually are going to flip it over. And you see your loose portion of the belt here. Your teeth at this moment should be facing upwards. And we're going to go ahead and slide it around our bearing, teeth facing on the bearing. Pull it tightly around. Bring it over the pulley so that the teeth lock into the pulley there like it's meant to. And then basically do the same thing we just did. Pull it out through the top of the belt holder, wrap it around, and secure it to itself. It can be a bit tricky pulling it up out of there, but there we got it. Pull it tightly, wrap it around, and then you'll see how it comes out there. And we're going to tie it to itself with a zip tie. It's securely around the pulley, securely around the bearing, and if we pull one end, the other one will move. And that is simple as that. We'll move on after that. Okay, so now we have the bed carriage mounted on the Y-axis. And we're going to go ahead and insert it in the main frame of the Prusa i3. And also attach the triangles. So we're going to go ahead and put the frame in here. We're going to slide it into the two grooves on the bottom of the frame and line it up and make sure the frame is parallel with the back end of the y-axis. So we're going to go ahead and tighten those up just to hold the frame in place. Now next, now that it's in there, we're going to insert the triangle part of the frames in the back. Now the slot on the bottom of these is going to slide in the longer of the two rods and go into place in the slots on the main square on both sides. And this will go ahead and complete the frame and give the printer its stability it needs. So I'll tighten these up. Now you're going to want to make sure these triangle frames are at an exact 90 degree angle with the main square frame. That way everything is parallel and perpendicular with its respective piece. So after that, we're going to use our M3 20 millimeter bolts along with the nuts and washers that accompany them and put them in the main frame and connect it to the triangle part. That way it gives it the most stability it requires. So we're going to go ahead and tighten these up and then move on to the next segment.